liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Um, just couldn't get things together Christmas week yeah. to record anything. That's a tough week, man. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, you were super busy. I was not particularly, but um, we went uh, we went down to the beach for Christmas celebrations, and... Um, I, we didn't have room for another box. <laughs> that, that, that's the that's the short. You were at capacity. Yeah, my mom was like, I don't understand why it's it's uh, you know we're filling this truck up with stuff just to go down to the beach for a couple of days. And I was like, yeah, but we're doing Christmas down there. <laughs> like we're taking we're taking a tree, we're taking ornaments, we're taking all of the presents, we're taking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a lot oh, of stuff. Man. Just the we had to tie of... stuff down. Like oh, wow. we had to double stack things. I was yeah. kind of uncomfortable. I tied everything down, so I wasn't that uncomfortable with that <laughs> so, part. So you were all right with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but before I tied it down, I was but, uncomfortable with it. <laughs> yeah. Which is the reason you tied it down. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And then I had a hard time untying it because I'm a Boy Scout. <laughs> so I tied real knots. So and... it was tied right. <laughs> yeah. I finished yeah. with a taut line hitch. Yeah. Nice. Pull it tight. Not, that's not going. You flick it. And that's not going anywhere. It's not. Dong. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Uh, I got a nice tone out of it. Good. Good. Yeah. So, um, but it was a good time. Well, fortunately for us, no news happened while we were out. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, it's funny because um, when we were talking uh, earlier today about possible topics, you're like, "Man, it's been a long time since we podcast." And I'm like, "No, we only missed one week." But. <laughs> The the government tries to squeeze everything into Christmas week that's going to piss people off that they possibly can yeah. um, because they figure you'll be distracted and not because, notice. Because you think the news takes off when you're off, right? right. <laughs> well, and most of the news people do. Do, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get any real news. I was uh, scrolling through Yahoo today, and I swear a third of the articles there were, you know, um, how somebody looks in a bikini and so and so's great abs and uh, isn't that what Yahoo always is? Though? I th- actually I do think that it, that's that's pretty well. That's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is like I li- why I like to scroll through and look at pictures. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Spend a lot of time there. Right? Yeah. No, no. 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 Oh. I I only see Yahoo News really when I log out of my um, my uh, junk email account. I was supposed to say when when it actually comes up. Yeah, my my email account that um, I, you know, that's another thing, right? So I've given the Liberty Mike email to, of course, all of my family, yeah, um, and friends, and um, I for businesses I use that junk Yahoo account, yeah, because if I'm gonna get a bunch of spam, that's where I want it to go, yeah. Um, I figure I don't get, I won't get spam. Well, I do get spam from family sometimes but (laughs) not as much (laughs) not as much it's not like a it's not like real spam it's just things that i consider to be spam yeah um but and and i even announce the email address on this podcast every week yeah my family doesn't use that address they They continue to send things to the yahoo address and so i get this would you get my email like i don't have an email from you yeah no, no, no. I sent it like uh, like a week ago. What address did you send it to? Yeah. Send it to the Yahoo account. Well, I don't check that account. <laughs> yeah, because it's junk. <laughs> yes. So um, then I have to wade through the Yahoo account. But I was checking it because of the plumbing stuff. Because oh, yeah. that's, of course, the email address I gave that guy. <laughs> of course, yeah. And uh, so I was in there to check that. And I had like a hundred and something spam emails, like legit real spam emails to delete. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then I logged out and saw. Man, Yahoo I'm horrible with email. So I rarely, if ever, check my email. Only time I check my email is if somebody is like, I sent you something. Yeah. And I'm like, then I go in and check it. And there is thousands thousands of emails in there like it's it's a mess in that place man yeah like, <laughs> i i so i get the liberty mic emails on my phone i don't yeah. set up yahoo on my phone yeah yeah so you know if you send it to the liberty mic email there's You'll a good chance it. i'll get it at least yeah. in a day or so like i don't constantly check my email but yeah you know it's there i carry it with me <laughs> all right oh look there's a number beside this thing yeah let me click exactly. on that <laughs> And then it's like, you know, Tom Woods Liberty Classroom or yeah. something. Anyway, so we um, 
didn't get to talk with, uh, well, I, I got to talk with G.I. Greg, but we didn't get to do a podcast with G.I. Greg. I am still saving a topic, like maybe he and I can get on Discord or um, Zoom or something and, and still do the topic that I wanted to talk about. We could maybe add it into one of our podcasts or, I don't know. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, we'll see. There's some things I got to figure out about that. Mostly making sure that the quality is good. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't want it to detract from our general quality. Our uh, high our, standard. Our, yeah, of... our general sound quality that's um, yeah. better than most. And uh, anyway, well, yeah, we'll figure we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but there are, you know, a few things to talk about. Yeah. Um, we may as well start with one that's just not going to take very long, I don't think. Um, and this, you know, now I'm going to get us our, um, what explicit rating on, uh, iTunes with this, because my note is Bernie Sanders is a pussy on Yemen. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he is. (laughs) (laughs) I should have switched that to pansy or something, but yeah. The note is what the note is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, so our, War Powers Act that was going through the Senate that we've been pushing so hard, get people to call their representatives and senators and yeah. and get this thing going. Um, that was sponsored by Bernie Sanders in the Senate. Uh, I believe it was the day that it was supposed to go uh, yep. to the floor. It was the day of the vote. Yeah, he Art withdrew it. Floor. Yeah, yeah, he withdrew it. Yeah, um, saying that he had talked to the administration and they had assured him that they were working towards a peaceful conclusion to the Yemen issue. Which means the administration talked to him and said, you don't need to do this. <laughs> yeah, you got to get on board with this administration. This may, this could make us look bad. Yeah. Uh, because if it passes, then uh, Biden's going to have to His veto it. His hands will it. be tied, yeah. Well, yeah, or he'll have to veto it, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think Biden would have really vetoed it? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I yeah. mean, otherwise, why stop them? Yeah, because that doesn't make him look as bad as if he vetoes it. Yeah. You well, know. okay, but if if they pass it and he signs it, yeah. then you know the Democrats he, have finally stopped the war in Yemen. Yeah, but the yeah the problem is though is he'd have to like abide by it. Yeah. Well, it it is. I mean, I guess it puts him in an awkward position vis a vis the Saudis right now because he's trying to be friendly with the Saudis um, for oil. Yeah. But they're already snubbing him, so I don't know why. Like, to me, this is the best opportunity to do this. Why do we need to placate the Saudis? Yes, exactly. (laughs) Which is the reason this was started in the first place. Yeah. So um, if we're already being snubbed by the Saudis and they're already negotiating with Russia and whoever else, um, then now seems like the perfect opportunity to say, okay, well, we're withdrawing our support. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So I I don't uh, I don't understand it as a move, except that he doesn't want to he doesn't want the war to end. The only reason I can see him, the administration, I don't think he has, you know, honestly, I don't think Biden has anything much to do with it. Um, I think uh, Blinken probably more likely um, doesn't want to see that war come to an end. And um, so. It would put uh, it would put Biden in a position where he would have to veto it, and that would make him look bad that his party passed a bill that he then vetoed. Yeah, um, that's the only reason I can think of that they would talk to Bernie and say that and tell him that he needs to withdraw so, this thing. So did they have the votes to if he had brought probably. it up? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, they only needed a few. I think most of the Republicans would vote for it just because it was Obama's war. Well, yeah. Yeah. And um, it only takes a few Democrats, and it was a Democrat that introduced it. Yeah, yeah. Well, a Democrat, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, a yeah. Democrat. Yeah. Democrat um, in name only. A, a dino. <laughs> a dino. <laughs> he is kind of a dinosaur. Yeah. Um, so that that's the only reason that I can figure. And I, I think that it was a real... I mean, it, it just shows that Bernie has no backbone, as he's proven over and over again over the last six years. Yeah. Um, that he, they asked him to bring it back, and he's like, "Well, I have faith that the um, the administration is going to end the war, like they said." And uh, instead of me 
presenting this bill and voting on it that would force them to end the war. I want the war to end, but I don't want to make it happen. I want to trust everybody else. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, it doesn't make it. any sense. Yeah. Well, so, what's to stop somebody else from proposing the same thing? Nothing. I don't really? think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's a shame we can't get like a Rand Paul or a, or somebody else that will. Yeah, bring it's this a shame up. that he wasn't a sponsor anyway. Yeah. Um. I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Yeah. I, I to me, this is even more incentive to like push people to call their senator and representative and say, "Hey, you need to pick up." You need to pick this up and and take it forward. If Bernie yeah. doesn't have the um, the spine to do it, yeah. then do you? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Present as a challenge. At least yeah. if it's a well, actually, probably anybody, any of the representatives or senators, if you present it like that, is going to feel like they kind of have to. <laughs> kind of obligated. Yeah. yeah. So keep making the phone yeah. calls. I guess we'll try and get this done. Yeah. This was the, like a really good opportunity to put an end to this war yeah. and, uh, and the administration, um, yeah, axed it. Yep. Well, sort of put pressure on Bernie and Bernie yeah. folded. Yeah. But they, I mean, they have to know just like anybody else. We just put a little pressure on this guy. He'll break. Yeah. Folded like the cheap suits he wears. Yep. Anyway. So that's the, uh, that might actually be the most disappointing news, which is hard to believe. <laughs> when we're looking at the rest of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I don't know. What do you want to go to next? It doesn't matter to me. What you got? All right. Well, uh, okay. Uh, let's go with this omnibus, um, which we do this every year yeah. about this time. I was going to say, we always wait till the end of the year when Christmas rolls around. Yeah. Everybody's, all the senators and congressmen are ready to go home, yep. but they got to pass this bill first to do it. Yep. Do you want to go see your family or do you want to spend the rest of your Christmas in D.C.? I think it's not as of, as effective as it used to be because they, um, at least in the House, they've allowed proxy votes. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think a bunch of people left anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and they just left their proxies. Yeah. But, um, no, it's the, okay, so the bill's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a dozen bills, each funding their own separate parts of the government. Yeah. They're supposed to be passed around September. Yeah. Maybe before, I think the fiscal, uh, the federal, the feds fiscal year starts in September, I think. Okay. Or maybe October. Um, so they're supposed to get these things done then. Of course, they put it off in September. I know that this vote was supposed to be in September yeah. originally. Um, they put it off to the 16th of December. <laughs> three months. Oh, well, yeah. you know, we don't need to do this for three months. Yeah. And um, then they put it off for another week <laughs> to the 23rd. Mm. Right? 21st, maybe? 23rd, I think, is when they actually did it, right? Like last I'm, Wednesday? I'm not sure. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, then, um, as has become tradition, Christmas tradition, yeah. um, they put out a mini thousand page report or uh, bill days before they have to vote on it, giving nobody any time to read it. Yeah. Um, this one, as I understand it, between the actual bill, which was 4,000 something pages, and the addendum to the bill with the, a bunch of explanations that was like another 2,500. This was like like 4,600 and something pages of legislation. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like of lawyer speak. Yeah. A, um, a, a very dense, hard <laughs> reading. Yeah. Um, that they had to, had to pass. Yeah. Um, to keep the government open. Now, I don't understand why more, especially Republicans who are supposed to be small government, et cetera. Yeah. Um, don't say, yeah, we don't really need all of this. So let's just, Let's just shut down those portions of the government. You remember years ago when the government shut down, it was getting, you know, the sky was falling oh, and like yeah. nobody noticed anything different. Yeah. Well, they actually started like actively like punishing stuff, like closing like parks and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Like public parks that <laughs> like don't even need funding or anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't just, need a person there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just to kind of make you feel it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, they present it last moment. Uh, this must pass bill. It's got a whole bunch of fat in it. Um, bunch of junk that, that, you know, pet projects for this, that, and the other. Um, Rand Paul got up there and read off a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you listen to it, you look at this, 
$1.7 trillion government funding bill. Now, okay, so the, this isn't even the budget. Like, this isn't even the federal budget. This is just to fund the federal government yeah. for a year. Yeah. $1.7 trillion. Wow. It's unreal. Um, but, you know, you start looking at some of the things in it, and I'm not going to go, there's there's a laundry list. And most people are saying, well, you know, but the things that are being talked about, they're, you know, hundreds of millions here, billion or so there, like drop in the bucket for a $1.7 trillion bill. Yeah. True. But there's so many of them. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of drops. You know how you fill up a bucket? <laughs> drop by drop out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, put a bucket under a, a sink leak sometimes, see how long it takes. It yeah. doesn't take as long as you would think. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's all these things. That's just a bunch of junk. That's unnecessary. That doesn't benefit the, the people as a whole of this country. Like, even if you believe that that's what government's really supposed to do. Yeah. Um, you know, be friendly highways is not something that I think everybody in the U S really cares that much about. And certainly like salmon in Alaska is not. Yeah. Um, or, uh, oh gosh, there was a New York city specific thing. Um, the ferry, uh, the long Island ferry, Staten Island ferry. One of those anyway yeah. is, is partially federal taxpayer funded. <laughs> well, good for them. <laughs> so that they can keep it free for New Yorkers and tourists. Yeah. Uh, it's good to know my tax dollars are going to help those poor New Yorkers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're getting poor by the day. So, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> um, Totally begrudge them the help that they clearly need. <laughs> yeah. But they keep voting for these people, so... Yeah, you know. they ask for it themselves. <laughs> exactly. Like. And, uh, of course, of this $1.7 trillion, essentially half of it is going to the Pentagon. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, it's like... It's I almost mean, exactly. It's like $985 billion um, for uh, defense funding. Wow. I, I didn't... So I didn't know that. I mean, I, I guess I'm not surprised, mm -hmm. but, like... That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, then we've got, and to go ahead and transition, I, I kind of want to keep this short. Sorry. No, so, you're good. Um, to go ahead and transition or to try and include all of this together, um, you know, in there, of course, was another like $45 billion for uh, Ukraine. Man, I tell you that we got to help those Ukrainians. <laughs> <laughs> Um, sarcasm doesn't work well in an audio only medium. I'm just, just saying, I, but I hear that all the time. Like when I, anytime it comes up, like that's, that's what people like. I hear that a lot. Well, I mean, the argument here is the same argument that we made about Afghanistan, which is if you really want to help them in the war, don't prolong it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's the issue. Like, there's here. a huge difference between helping the Ukrainian military and helping the people of Ukraine. Well, and so I was thinking about that over the weekend um, anyway. Like, so so we're sending all of this stuff to help Ukraine. And it it would almost, I could almost get by with it. I mean, of course, I'd never really support government-funded anything. But I could almost let it go if we were, like, sending in food packages and and stuff that like actually help the people of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. But like we're not even like pretending that's what we're doing. Yeah. Like we're sending in weapons. Like that's all we're doing is sending in weapons and and money. And money, yeah, which is not going to help the people. It's going to at least if you believe what they're saying to fund the war effort. Mm -hmm. Um which I mean you with it being and I think people forget this, but Ukraine is not like this like perfect government that like is super honest. Like they're th that this is one of the most corrupt governments there is other than yeah. our own. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> well, but even on those lists, um, like Russia and Ukraine's government are roughly equal in terms of corruption. Yeah. yeah. Like they're not far apart. Well, yeah. And, uh, but so, but it goes to my point of, so we're sending this money over here supposedly for what we weapons and the war effort, but it's probably lining the pockets of, you know, all of these little, I don't know if they Oligarchs. Have, oligarchs. That's the word I was looking for. It's, I was, I was exactly. almost going to say government or uh, governors, but you're mm -hmm. right. It's oligarchs. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what are we really doing here other than just shipping our money into uh, nothing? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. We're paying off the Ukrainian elite. 
Yeah. And uh, just like we're just like we're paying off the American elite. Yeah. It, it's it's the same thing, except that it's not even our people. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Not that I'm supporting paying off our people either, but um, yeah, I, I was thinking about it the other day, like. You know, the part of um, the Ukrainian government that doesn't get covered by Western media is that, um, and we've covered it on this podcast, and I don't remember the timeline exactly for these things, but uh, they, um, the Zelensky administration in Ukraine um, shut down or abolished opposition political parties. Yeah. Okay. They um, shut down or uh, nationalized, uh, well, they shut down or nationalized opposition media stations, and then they nationalized the media as a whole. Yeah. All right, so yeah. N- now it's all state-run media. So it's all media. state-ran, yeah. Um, kind of like RT. They, right. Um, or BBC. Or BBC, yeah, BBC is a good example. Or France actually. 24. Yeah, yeah. Or PBS. Or I was fixing to say, yeah, NPR, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> So uh, then um, they they have been uh, jailing or disappearing, yeah. depending on who you talk to, but um, jailing, um, you know, opposition figures, just like activists yeah. um, or pro-Russian um, citizens yeah. in Ukraine. Um, the And just recently, now, um, one of our friends way back um, at near the beginning of this thing, sent me like a half a dozen articles about how this was really a religious war yeah. um, within the Orthodox Church. Yeah. Well, just a week or two ago, um, the Zelensky administration has started um, attacking the uh, the Russian Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, shutting down churches, raiding churches, uh, saying that they're a you know, political tool, uh, espousing um, Russian propaganda, blah, blah, blah. You, yeah. s- same old story, right? Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> the articles that the, our friend was sending me um, were about how the Russians had started this war because it was a religious issue. They were trying to um, reunify the Russian Orthodox Church uh, there was a schism, of course, along these ethnic lines where um, a bunch of Orthodox churches split off from the... Well, actually, it's more like the Russians split off from the um, general Eastern Orthodox Church, and uh, they're trying to get the Ukrainian um, versions of the church that had stayed with the Eastern Orthodox and weren't ex- uh, accepting the Russian version, the Russian schism... Yeah. Um, to become, you know, whole again or what? I don't know. I, I can't remember this. Is, this yeah. is, let's see. This is, it was probably March <laughs> or something, April that I was reading all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but now it's kind of looking like it's the other way, right? With, <laughs> yeah. you know, of course the, the Russians don't have to deal with the, um, well, no, there, there are, um, Orthodox churches in Russia that don't agree with the, with the Russian schism as well. I mean, that was certainly part of the articles that he had sent me. Yeah. Um, but it's the Ukrainian, um, the Ukrainian government that is actually like, um, shutting down Russian Orthodox churches in Ukraine. Yeah. So, um, this is not, this is not a free society. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. we're not like protecting uh, a free democracy there in Ukraine. It's, yeah. you know, any more than we are in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And uh, so the, then, you know, we had this visit this, from the great and wonderful leader, <laughs> Vladimir Zelensky, who um, talked to uh, a joint session of Congress. Yeah. And got standing ovation after standing ovation. Oh, he was, speaks pretty good English, too. Yeah, with like just enough of a Ukrainian accent, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I well, it was full of propaganda, of course. I mean, it. You yeah, know, I didn't the, listen to the whole thing, but I did catch. I, I heard some of it, and mm-hmm. I've heard kind of like a supercut thing of like the high points and stuff. Yeah. And um, I mean that that was kind of more my takeaway was like this is just a, um, I don't know, like we need your money, like. Ploy is kind of what was my takeaway. 
like just keep giving us your money like <laughs> yeah. it's never going to be enough so the more you can give us the better mm -hmm. like was kind of my feeling of it yeah so it was, thank you thank you thank you we appreciate what you've done but it's not nearly it's never enough enough yeah we need much much more yeah. um of course we've already given him more um more money than the entire russian military budget yeah all right <laughs> if he still needs help after that <laughs> then it, it's really not a good sign that this investment is going well. No. And so, but that's what I thought of is that this is like an investor meeting. This is like an yeah. investor pitch. He's yeah. there in front of his investors trying to get them to put more money into this, his failing business. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> that's a good um, way to look at it. I didn't think about it that way. And that's why his, uh, his choice of attire yeah. bothers me. I think that it's worthwhile that people are, are saying um, that are, are upset that he went there in a, his sweatshirt and, his and fatigues. fatigues and yeah, yeah um, instead of wearing a shirt and tie, yeah, coat and tie. Yeah. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that think that's just ridiculous. Like the guy's coming from the battlefield, which is a lie. <laughs> yeah. He's not. He's never seen a battlefield. Yeah. Um, that may be unfair, but. Yeah. I don't think this that's whole far. country's the battlefield. I, I, like I you just think, don't yeah, understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't think that that's far from the truth though, that he's never seen a battlefield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, it, uh, like I get the whole thing about it. Well, you know, it's a sign of respect and it's a sign of disrespect that he wouldn't even dress up to, um, you know, to address yeah. Congress and I so mean, on. My thing is, is, I mean, he took a plane there, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, he, he took, uh, as as I understand it, he took a train from Kiev to Poland and he took, um, I think it was uh, um, Air Force Two. I was going to say, it was pro I, I, so I didn't know, but I kind of thought it might be one of our planes. It was one of our planes. It was definitely one of our planes that he took from Poland to the U.S. Throw a suit on in the plane, man. Exactly. You got plenty of time. <laughs> like, his, his wife just got a whole bunch of um, um, grief about a $40,000 shopping spree in Paris right. not that long ago. She couldn't buy the guy a suit? <laughs> exactly. Throw but, it on the plane. Like, but you know, like you've seen him in suits before. Like the guy was an entertainer. He was an actor. Like he's yeah. appeared for award shows in suits and ties. Like he the guy suits. knows how to dress up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but to me, it was like the way to look at it is, um, would you go to a job interview dressed like that? Yeah. Like when you go to a job interview, you dress up like you want to make a good impression. You want those people to put money into you. Yeah. Like if you're going in front of investors and trying to get them to give you more money, you dress up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he didn't. And that's exactly what he was doing, though. He's, he yeah. was he was going and appearing in front of his investors, trying to get more money for his failing business. And he didn't even bother to dress up. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's like Sam Bankman Freed. He showed up in his T-shirt and ratty jeans <laughs> and uh, unkempt hair and, you know, was asking for more money. And somehow, like, he got standing ovations and more money than he asked for. Well, yeah. not more money than he asked for, but more money than was originally planned. Yeah, planned to give to him. Yeah. And this is a this is a waste of our time. Yeah. Like... Ukraine cannot win that. I don't know how many times I have to say this. And I know that this, it's if you're just listening to mainstream media, this is hard to believe. Yeah, because that's not what you're getting from there. But and if you listen to like like French 24, like a, a bunch of like the more foreign ones, um, like all the coverage is just how bad the Ukrainian people have it. And that's kind of what got me thinking this um, this weekend when I was listening. I was like, well. Like, it, it, because I, and I do believe that, that the Ukrainian people are suffering, like suffering bad. Yeah. Um, but if you really want, and, and of course the news is pushing you propaganda. I mean, they want you to feel bad for those people. Um, but if you really want what's right for those people, it's to not send more money to fund the war effort. Mm -hmm. It's to, if anything, send more money to help those people. Yeah. And let the war d resolve itself. Yeah. And send diplomats, send negotiators, send yeah. people that can try and find some kind of agreement that both of these states can yeah. accept. Yeah. And to me, it's like, if you, if you look back at the history... If you look at the political history in Ukraine, um, it's really pretty easy to determine what needs to be done. Um, I, I recommend to people to go look at political maps of Ukraine uh, from like 2010 um, and and beyond. Yeah. And just see how people were voting. And there's, there's plenty of them out there that show, um, 
you know, what parts of the country voted for the pro-Russian candidate, what parts of the country voted for the, the pro-Western candidate. Yeah. And there's a, actually a pretty clear line. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's roughly on the other side of what Russia has claimed here. Yeah. Um, the Zaporizhia, the Donbass regions, um, the, oh gosh, what's the name of the other one? Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia. And now I can't think of the name of the fourth province that they claimed. And of course, Crimea. Yeah. Um, so it like, shouldn't let them be keep that it. hard to, to come up with a solution here. Yeah. I mean, the, the lines were drawn kind of arbitrarily to begin with because it was all under the greater Soviet union. Yeah. Um, and then there were like little provinces that kept flipping back and forth, but it didn't have any real meaning. Yeah. Then when the Soviet union collapsed, um, they drew these lines around Ukraine as it existed, but, um, the way it existed in 1999, it had only been like that for like 30 years. <laughs> yeah. And those people had all functioned under the same government before the, out of Moscow. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that the, that the, the West and North of the country, um, is, uh, is very much opposed to, uh, Moscow and any any kind of Russian anything like there's some real resentment there. Yeah. But the people in the south and the east are Russian. Yeah. And identify as Russian. Yeah. And want to be part of Russia. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a really simple solution here if we want to look at it. Mm. And if you go back to the to February before this all started, um, in the the ten days roughly two weeks maybe leading up to um, Russia's invasion, uh, the Ukrainian military had stepped up its artillery barrage of the Donbass region, of the civilian Donbass region. Yeah. Um, which, and they had amassed troops along the border and so forth, and it looked like the Ukrainian military was about to invade their, um, their Donbass provinces. Yeah. And the Russians stepped in, and there had been political pressure in Russia for a long time, for Putin to do something about this, because they saw it as their people that were getting killed by the Ukrainian, um, the Ukrainian military. Yeah. Even though that that area was technically part of Ukraine. Yeah. But and there's been lots of reports coming out um, that the Ukrainians aren't treating um, the Russian people in the areas that they've recaptured very well. Yeah. And Russia's in a weird position here too, because now that they've claimed those regions. Like, what happens to those people if they give them back to Ukraine? Yeah. I mean, Ukraine hasn't shown that, like, that they're ready to, like, live and let live. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that Russia has, yeah. but if, if Russia gets to keep those regions, it is their people. Yeah. Yeah. There will be real problems if they're mistreated. But if the Ukraine side takes it back, not really anybody's going to push back. Yeah. So... It seems to me that the lines are fairly clear already. Yeah. Um, and you just like let it, let it, let the ethnic borders be the the political border. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, well, I, I'm sure that Russia would accept that. Um, oh yeah, Russia's already came out. I want to say this week or last, like that they're ready to negotiate, but that's mm -hmm. like a sticking point like mm -hmm. that's like that's the price of entry as far as negotiation as far as the russians are concerned is like we're going to keep the areas we've already taken yeah um and of course for uh the u.s and ukraine that's a that's a non-starter yeah um but um until like the last couple of weeks uh the ukraine and the u.s have been insisting that russia give back crimea yeah and that's a non-starter too yeah yeah like, like people are going to have to give some stuff up. Yeah. Um, I, and I think it's going to be Ukraine that has to give some stuff up yeah. because they're losing. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless I mean, like, of what the, U, the, mil, the, uh, mil, what the media is telling you, yeah. like, that's the facts. <laughs> yeah. Um, they have uh, tremendous casualties. They've got a whole bunch of, uh, of people deserting. Yeah. Um, the, they, just, they can't, they don't have the power of the Russian military. And the Russian military has plenty of reserves. They can keep pulling people up. Yeah. Um, like, this is only going to get uglier if they continue the war. If you want to do something for the Ukrainian people, then urge a peace negotiation. That's the only thing that's going to save the Ukrainian people. 
Yeah. They may not get all the territory back. They may not get any of the territory back, but it's better than losing how many thousands more lives. Yeah. And, and uh, destroying the country. Because that's absolutely. the other end of this is once this war does eventually end, and at some point it'll have to, mm -hmm. that country is going to have to be rebuilt. Yeah. Well, and that's good for us. I mean, well, we're it okay is good for that. us. And the, but the but the longer it goes on, the more rebuilding is going to have to be done. Mm -hmm. Once again, good for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think if they had uh, had negotiated a couple of months ago after the referendums, um, where Russia claimed those four territories, yeah. those four provinces. Yeah, that was before Russia started attacking the um, um, energy infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like it could have been done then. Yeah. You wouldn't have to rebuild the whole energy infrastructure. You wouldn't be looking forward to this winter without power. With no power, yeah. Um, you know, the idea that, again, the idea that you're helping Ukraine by helping fund their military is just wrong. You're yeah. only helping the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian political elite. Yep. The, the average person in Ukraine is better served by peace negotiations. Yeah. And there's one thing, like... I mean, we showed in um, in Syria um, and in Iraq with the Kurds, yeah. right? Like the idea that like this war went on as long as the Americans were supporting them. And then there was all this fear that when the Americans pulled out that it was going to be a slaughter. Yeah. Well, what happened was when the Americans pulled out, there was a negotiation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then everything, like they came to an agreement. Yeah. And actually, the Kurds aren't being attacked by the the Iraqi government or the Syrian government. They're getting attacked by the Turks. Yeah, I was fixing to say, yeah, that's, <laughs> so, that's Turkey. <laughs> so, you know, the, the answer to this isn't to continue to support their military. It's just prolonging the war and causing more destruction and, and more civilian lives to be lost. If you want this thing to come to a conclusion, the conclusion isn't going to be a military one. It has to be a diplomatic one. And the sooner that happens, the better. Recognizing that you can't have a military con conclusion to this, I, I would say, gives you moral duty to come to a diplomatic conclusion as quickly as possible. Yeah. Because everything in between that, the point where you realize that you can't have a military victory, that this is going to have to be a diplomatic conclusion. Yeah. And every every moment between the point where you figure that out and the point where you actually engage in a diplomatic solution to this yeah. is just lost lives for no reason. Yep. And infrastructure. And infrastructure. Well, I mean, that contributes to lost lives, too. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the, the people of Ukraine aren't served by us supporting their military. The people of Ukraine would be better served if everybody in the West just pulled out of it militarily entirely yeah. and let Ukraine realize that they can't win this and engage in negotiations. Yeah. And even with all this U.S. support, they still can't win it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think that it. they're yeah. I think that they're proving that just by the amount of of money that we've already sent over there. Yeah, that if they have, I, I think it's roughly fifty percent. We have committed fifty percent more than the entire Russian military budget for a year. Yeah, to Ukraine. Yeah, they hadn't won this on their own territory yet with all that support. Yeah. They can't win it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a dead stalemate. Yeah. It's a, it's a numbers game here, and the Russians have more of everything. Yeah. Except money, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. money isn't in all of it. And, you know, the, the Russians can keep pulling reserves and bringing more troops in there, and the Ukrainians only have so many people. Yeah. And they're losing a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, they may be gaining territory, but they're, they're taking severe casualties. And they're, it, this is mostly an artillery war, I think, yeah. is what we've seen. And the Russians are firing a lot more artillery rounds than the Ukrainians. Yeah. And the Ukrainians are losing more people. You just, you just can't win that in the long term. The Russians have it figured out. Yeah. Like, they can take, make slow gains. Um, when they're overwhelmed in an area, they make strategic retreats. Yeah. They cause a lot of casualties in their retreat. Yeah. They're they're just gonna grind it out, yeah. and they're okay with that. Yeah, playing the long game. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think at least finally, you know, you are hearing a little bit like the the concession on Crimea that's come out of the U.S. government recently. Like that's actually yeah. kind of a good sign. Yeah. Um, 
Biden said something about, uh, you know, NATO wouldn't support uh, us sending better weapons over there or something like that. That would cause some kind of rift in NATO. Really? Um, yeah, in the uh, the uh, press conference after his meeting with Zelensky. Because yeah. somebody was asking about, you know, why aren't we sending them more long range weapons or something like that? Yeah. And he made some kind of response that that suggested that um, that at least there would be some NATO countries that would be really unhappy with that. Yeah. If we were sending them other kinds of weapons. Hmm. So um, I, I think that's a good sign as well. If we're like looking for a conclusion to this thing. Yeah. And uh, certainly Germany and France have have who are you know, the two biggest players other than the U S and NATO, um, have been, uh, constantly talking about negotiations and yeah, cause concessions. They, cause, and so cause they need that Russian oil. Yeah. Like that's, that's their problem. Yeah. <laughs> like that's their, their issue. Well, the big thing is fertilizer. Oh really? Yeah. Now, yeah. um, at least because, uh, not getting Russian fertilizer out to everybody means that like affects the whole world. Yeah. You know, like affects, um, Crops. you know, especially like places like Africa and places that do a lot of importing, yeah. um, of food from the Western world, not having Russian, um, uh, fertilizer, uh, reduces food crops it can be significant. Substan yeah. Substantially. Um, and people are going to feed their own countries before they feed other countries. Yeah. And so there's been some, um, some relaxation of some of the sanctions to get fertilizer out. Yeah. And, uh, the Ukrainians are raising hell about that. Yeah. Cause they're not concerned about anybody else. Yeah. Um, so the short podcast turned into a normal podcast. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have anything else to say about this, really. Do you, no, I, like no. I, I feel like I've kind of been rambling for a little bit, anyway. <laughs> nah. So it's all good. But yeah, no, I mean that's um, like I say, it, we're not helping them. I mean, that's kind of my yeah. thing. Is you know, if, if we wanted to help them, we could, mm -hmm. but help supporting their military just isn't it. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's just not the answer. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, and uh, you know all the all that's ending up happening is that it's becoming an increasingly increasingly oppressive government in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and there's more and more losses, and it'll be harder and harder to recover. Yep. And you're going to create a new immigration crisis. Yeah. Because people will go where the food is. Yeah. As Sam Kinison used to say. Yeah, that a thing. <laughs> yeah, you hadn't heard that I Sam Kinison that, bit. No. That's an old one. I like, only the old people <laughs> listen to this podcast will even get that reference because he was a comedian that uh, that died young. Uh, um, I'll see if I can find it after we get off of this. It, right. it is not safe for work. So. <laughs> not not that. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, sorry we missed a week. Um, it just we just couldn't make it work out. Yeah. And uh, but here we are on New Year's Eve Eve. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. Should. Should be a good one. We got a lot of rain here today, so I can let my fireworks out without having to worry about burning my neighbor's house down. Yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that here anyway. I don't think you do either, but I always <laughs> feel better if we've had a nice rain. I don't think the humidity ever gets low enough here that a uh, firework can really start a fire. Uh, we lost some Chinese lanterns the other night, and apparently Facebook thinks that it, that, that is a, a very real fire threat. And yeah. I'm sure in parts of the country, maybe it is. But yeah. that's that's what I kept saying yesterday. <laughs> maybe you wouldn't like, want to do that in like New Mexico. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I, and I get that. It, honestly, if we were under some kind of drought here, I wouldn't do that. I'd mm -hmm. be like, all right, you know, let's not, maybe that's, this isn't the best idea. Yeah, drought conditions here means it's only 80% humidity. Though. Well, yeah, but that's what I was fixing to say. The humidity is so high here and it had just rained. Like these, these lanterns are not hurting a thing. No. So anyway, my my rant for the day on Chinese lanterns yeah. and Facebook. <laughs> well, uh, Merry Christmas to everybody and whatever other holiday you may celebrate during that period. And, um, you know, everybody look forward to a happy new year. Uh, happy and peaceful new year, hopefully. Yes. And uh, But we'll see. Except for my fireworks <laughs> that I'm going to blow up. Yeah, there will be some <laughs> explosions. Yes. <laughs> But the good kind. Most, mostly peaceful. <laughs> mostly peaceful explosions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, so uh, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, uh, like and share, comment, um, 
leave uh, reviews. Uh, I don't know, whatever all the other stuff is. And tell your friends. Always Absolutely. tell your friends. That's um, the big one. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back next week. Um is the plan. Yep. I mean, I don't see any reason that we wouldn't at this point. I, yep. I, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of careful about the Christmas week promises. I tried to be anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know that I couched them as well as I should have, but, um, but we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.